All right. All right, guys, how y'all doing today? I'm Mr. Zoe, you call me Joe, that'll work for now. So one of the things we're going to discuss today is the power of social media, right? Because I know you guys know all about social media, and I don't really want to get in depth with just talking about the negatives or the positives, etc. But I want you guys, hopefully by the end of today, to realize the power of social media, because it does have a massive, massive amount of power, possibly more power than most other things in our life. So, one of the things I wanted to introduce is myself, obviously, I'm, I'm Mr. Zobel, I'm a guidance counselor, I'm a, uh, in Bergen County, at a high school. I'm also a volunteer fireman, uh, juvenile fire setter intervention specialist, try to say that seven times fast, go. No, I'm just kidding, you're right, no. All right, and I'm also a student of social media. My biggest thing is that, as a millennial, I want to know what's going on, right? Social media is constantly happening, constantly evolving. I say it. I do this presentation to you guys this month, right? So let's say you guys had me back next month. I'd give you a totally different presentation because you guys are changing so fast, right? It's constantly evolving, constantly moving. So I always want to be a student of it and get involved. So I'm more worried about what's trending. I want to know what's happening now because what was cool yesterday is not cool today and it's going to be obsolete by tomorrow. All right? So... We got Snapchat, we got Instagram, FaceTime, Twitter, YouTube, WhatsApp, Reddit, Finsta. What else are you guys using? I know, I just heard, go ahead. Skype, Skype. Skype. Somebody else just told me about, um, don't lie about MySpace, who are, you, who are you kidding? What do you got? MySpace, yeah, yeah, right. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, we got to make sure that we put MySpace in there, you know? All right, regroup. Here we go. So, I was given two very valid from the 7th and 6th grade. I do not think, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure MySpace is not valid anymore. But I was hoping to get something out of you guys. But don't worry. My 7th and 6th graders gave me some really cool uh, different social media sites that I'm going to keep investigating and keep going. So maybe at the end, if you guys can help me out and continue on that track. So when we talk about social media, there's a lot of things that we need to know about. One of the things here is that over half of you have been involved in cyberbullying, right? Have been bullied, have been a victim of cyberbullying. About half of you, right? Now, for you young females, and I want to speak directly to you for a moment. Women, you are twice as likely to be cyberbullied. I mean, I can't even get the guys to pay attention to me right now. You are twice as likely to be cyberbullied. Did you also know that in the adult world, in the work world, Right? For every dollar that a man makes, a woman makes usually about 79 cents. Right? So it could be a little bit more inflated that, you know, the number's changing. But I want you guys to be aware, women, young women, right, that you got to fight for this equality. we got to get you guys empowered. We need to fight. It's 2017, right? You're twice as likely to be cyberbullied. And I want you guys to be aware of that because it's time you stand up for each other. It's time that you guys help each other out. All right? This is the world that we're living in. And this is the world that you guys are fighting against. Now, I'm not saying, guys, trust me, I know it's not easy for a guy out there, right? But I want you guys to know that. And also, those that are considered overweight, per se, right? If you're considered overweight, you are 70% more likely to be bullied, to have cyberbullying. That's horrific. That's horrific, because already we're dealing with enough issues already. And now you're going to turn around and say, those individuals, and I don't even know what overweight means anymore, because I've been looking more and more and thinking that that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. So right now, your generation, just so you guys are fully aware, you are going to be the first generation in history to have lower self-esteem than the generation before you. You guys have an increased sense of depression. To think that depression happens in middle school blew my mind. But then when I did my research, I started to think about it. Can, you, can this group just stand up for me? Just stand right up, no worries. 22 million people deal with cyber harassment, cyber humiliation, but only 6% say anything about it, which means that there's this epidemic, there's this virus that's going through all of you. These are the only ones that are doing anything about it, which means all of you are affected by this in some way, shape, or form, but you're doing nothing about it. Ah, it's just middle school, right? You just got to take it. That's what high school's going to be. We just got to take it. No, we don't. You guys are good to sit down. Thank you. So then I wonder, okay, well, if this is the only 6% that's saying anything, no wonder you guys have lower self-esteem. 
Because you're getting crushed every day and you're not saying anything about it. We're not talking about it. We're not doing anything about it. We just sit here and just say, that's what middle school is. Next year, that's what high school is going to be. We're not going to stop cyber harassment or cyber humiliation. It's just not going to happen. There's nothing we can do about it. Then I look, and I looked at another statistic that shocked me even more, is that 44%, so almost half of you guys, are going to lie about your age so you can get onto a social media site. But that's also equating in one in six of you will feel uncomfortable once you're there. Meaning this, right? If I, was on, if I was to get on a plane and somebody told me that this plane's going to crash one in six times, I'm going to tell you right now I'm not getting on it. If I'm going bungee jumping, they go, the cord snaps every one in six times. I'm not jumping. Why would you guys lie about your age to get into these sites and then be shocked when the plane crashes, when the cord snaps? You feel uncomfortable. You are scared. You just got a dose of reality that you did not need to have. Right? So keep that in mind when we're going through. I got some cool fun facts now with your generation. Did you know that more people own a cell phone than a toothbrush? A toothbrush, right? A toothbrush is a basic necessity in modern society. Yet it's more important for you to have a cell phone, because 91% of our cell phone usage is for social interaction. 91%. So it's more important to our society to be involved and be social and get on our sites than it is for our own physical health. That's the power of social media right now. That's the world that you're growing up in. It's not what I had to grow up in, and it's not what they had to grow up in. Right? This is what you're dealing with. You are saturated with information that literally every second, 500 hours of additional YouTube footage is on there. That's more than the human brain can process. You are literally getting crushed with information and you didn't even ask for it, right? You're not even looking for it. When I, was, when I grew up, if I wanted to know what was going on in the world, I'd turn on the news. But if I didn't, I just went outside and played hockey, threw the football around, you know? Now you guys pick up your phone and you're getting all this stuff about Syria and murders on Facebook, etc. You can't get away from it. You're not even asking for it. It's just happening, right? That's a bit, a bit of an issue. So one of the things I want to talk about is how many of you guys got Snapchat? Raise your hands. Snapchat. I got Snapchat too, man. No worries. All right, step on down. So Snapchat. Are you guys aware? Get on that Snap, right? Every picture that you've ever taken on Snapchat, Snapchat keeps. Are you guys aware that you can take a picture and never send it? You just take it and then you delete it? Do you know that Snapchat has that picture? So that, yeah. So if, if let's say, there was ever a police investigation or something was going on and harassment, intimidation, and bullying got involved and somebody needed to check your phone, they can literally check photos that you would never send a day in your life. We're going to talk about some photos momentarily, but keep that in mind. When you snap... Automatically Snapchat has it and you don't even have to send it and they say it when you agree. There's 19 pages of small text that no one reads, right? Me, I don't do it either. It's in there. It's in there. All right. Um, and just keep in mind, 20% 20 20 of you guys already have your location automatically set when you, do, when you post. Never know who's watching, guys. Never know who's, who's creeping on you, right? So keep that in mind. That can be a very dangerous situation. So we're talking about hashtags, right? One link. You know, one link. So you do a hashtag, it links everything together. Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, whatever it may be. So a negative situation can spread like a virus. So when I was in middle school, there was an issue where I, somebody came up with that. I was wearing a do-rag and a flat-brimmed hat to the mall one day. And I turned and I said, no, I didn't do that. I was at a swim meet with my mother this weekend in Pennsylvania. They said, no, we saw you. And that spread so crazy. I couldn't shake that for weeks but now, if this happened to me today, I guarantee you there would be a meme with my face on it. I'd be all over. There'd be a hashtag with my name, right? And you guys would be all over. And not only did I just have to deal with this section of the school when I was there, now everybody knows it. Everyone's seen me doing it. And I get it at home. I get it when I'm at football practice, and I'm getting it in school. That's the difference between when I was bullied versus when we're getting bullied now, right? It's a completely different scenario because it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop, and if anything, it can just get worse and worse. Even when we're trying to stop it, all of a sudden, it gets worse and worse. So I want to show you guys something momentarily. Hold on, Steph, with that. 
it spreads like a virus. I did nothing. I did nothing at all. I went to a swim meet with my mother, and I came back on Monday to a massive lie. I was powerless over it. I did nothing. I physically did not do what they said I did, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter. It was out there. So just like a virus, right? A virus goes ahead. It can infect you 24 to 48 hours before you show symptoms. How do you get a virus? Breathing it in, drinking water, eating food. We're not exactly sure how we get viruses, right? And the symptoms come, and it's horrible. And you go to the doctor, and you say, hey, how do we get rid of this? And they go, ah, it's a virus. Got it. It's just got to take its course. We'll give you some meds to make it feel a little bit better and try to numb the pain, but ultimately this has to ride it out. That's what we're dealing with with cyber harassment, cyber humiliation. You get infected. You get hit. You did nothing to deserve it, but it gets you. And now, what are we going to do about it? It really doesn't seem like we can do a whole lot, huh? So we're going to just go over this video. Go ahead, Steph. A new virus, unlike any other, has infiltrated schools through social media. A pandemic quickly spreading around the world. Its origin is yet to be known. However, individuals with a history of negative and violent home environments are often more susceptible to contraction. This girl has been infected. She is now host to the virus and risks spreading it to anyone. Every post the host makes and every text she sends exposes the virus to multiple people instantly. It is highly contagious and no one is immune. But some individuals may suffer more greatly from its side effects. The virus has chosen its victim. Carriers of the virus can be the least suspected of people and may even be unaware of their own infection. No one, not even this girl's parents and teachers, are aware that she is carrying such a deadly disease. Strains of this illness can be transferred by phone, email, and social media. Through wireless and satellite transmission, it can reach you at home, at school, or anywhere. The effects of the virus can take hours or days before getting out of control and causing serious damage to its victims. The virus feeds on those who are vulnerable to feeling emotions of hate, anger, envy, insecurity, and peer pressure. The effects have proven severe and could cause emotional scarring, creating long-term symptoms of depression and in some cases, suicide. But there is a way to fight against it. Fight the virus. You can put a stop to it. In support of Pink Shirt Day, join the battle against bullying. Write in pink to prevent further outbreaks of this pandemic. Protect yourself and report cases of the cyberbullying virus.
of things I want to just, we're going to go into stories momentarily. I wanted to show memes real fast, because I know you guys know what a meme is, right? But some of our teachers don't know what memes are, and because I want to go into my story, I also want to make sure we know exactly what we're talking about. All right. So, I'm going to let you guys know that these incidents, these next three incidents that I'm going to discuss are all real. I was involved in every single one of them. Now, what capacity? I will not let you know that. But I'll tell you right now. The reason that I really am here today, and I talked about being bullied at one point in time, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was a bully when I was in seventh grade, eighth grade. I was savage, bro. Agreed. I'm right there. Let me tell you right now, and you're right, though. You should make me feel bad, because I should feel bad. I feel horrible. It is the worst regret of my life. I don't have a whole lot of regrets, but I am truly, we'll get it to at the end. I am truly, truly ashamed of myself for being a bully. I ripped two kids apart for no reason. No reason at all. And there's nothing. I still, to this day, don't forgive myself for being a bully. I don't. I'm very lucky that those two individuals speak to me today and we're friends now. But I'll tell you right now, it is one of the worst regrets of my entire life. And yeah. I do deserve anything you have to say to me right now for that. So I have three incidents here about, you know, certain situations that I've been involved in in some capacity or another. First one. So there was a girl sitting at the lunch table, right? She's sitting at, she sits down. Three other girls approach her. They say, you need to get up. We're going to sit here. The girl goes, no. I'm sitting here. You, there's plenty of room for all of us. You can sit there or go sit somewhere else. So the girls go ahead and, you know, they, they walk away and they get on her for the rest of the, the rest of the cafeteria time, right? So they're sitting there making fun of her. Can't sit here, can't sit here, and making fun of her. She sits there, she eats her lunch, she takes it, no worries, right? She goes about her day. She goes to study hall next. She's on her computer. And some guy that she doesn't know walks up to her and does this. And he takes a quick picture of her. She turns and she goes like that. What are you doing? What are you doing? Within two hours, there was a mean with her hand like that and the picture of her saying, you can't sit with us with the hashtag of her name. That ended up on Twitter. It ended up on Instagram. It ended up on certain Finstas. It ended up on Snapchat. It started to spread like crazy. And this girl did nothing to deserve that. She goes home, keeps her up at night. She can't sleep. She's like, don't worry. Tomorrow will be a better day. She goes back the next day. What happened? It got a lot worse, right? Everybody had it in some form of social media. Everyone's bringing it to her and showing her. She's had enough. She goes to the principal. Principal handles it. No worries. Good. The kid got suspended. They took the picture. The girls got detentions. People that shared and liked it got detentions. All right, good. So we're all set, right? No worries. Problem is, is that girl was going to go to Virginia Tech. She had a ride to Virginia Tech. This issue shook her up so much that she said she can't go away from her parents. And then she decided to go to a school very close to home. She gave up her next four years of her education because she was terrified. She also goes to therapy weekly because that had such lasting effects on her. Now, I'm pretty sure that those girls and that boy had no intentions of ruining the next four years of her life and had no intentions of everything that she had worked for in her high school career up to that point and all her dreams that came true and they took it away from her. That was not their intention. I guarantee it. But it happened. It happened. That quick lapse of judgment, what they thought was funny, took her next four years away. The next incident that I was involved in, we had a girl here, a young lady, that decided to take an inappropriate photo of herself and send it to her boyfriend. Right? So she thought, you know, what's the big deal? I'm just going to send it to my boyfriend. What did the boyfriend do? Yo, bro, check this out, check this out. Start sending them out, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Boom. Boom. I like it. He is trash for that. So he goes ahead and shows all his boys. Listen up. So he goes ahead and shows his boys. What do his boys do? They share it beyond. They share it beyond. By the end of the day, it's all over the place. Everybody has this image. By the next day, she can't handle it anymore. Again, she goes to the principal, starts to go to get handled. It got so bad because she was a minor, it got to the police. And the police had to do an investigation, and a couple students are walking away in cuffs. Moreover, that's not, that, that's not where it ends. You know who else had, got to eventually see that photo because it got so big? Her mom and dad, right? 
Now with that in mind, before you laugh about that, her mom and dad were divorced within the year. Were divorced within the year. Because the community had found out about it, and parents talk just like students do. And it ripped the family apart. It ripped them apart. That girl, later on, had alcohol addiction, drug addiction, therapy, and still to this day has not had a decent relationship or able to hold an actual meaningful relationship because of the massive trust issue she has. Do you think that that photo, when she took it and sent it, she knew that it was going to ruin everything in her life? Did, did she know that it was going to have a 10 to 20 to 30 year effect on her life? Absolutely not. Yeah, the kid got arrested, you know. It's our, it ruined her life. It ruined her parents' life. The family's divorced. And those of us that have come from divorce, you understand how difficult and how painful that is. That's what happened to that individual. And the last one. This is Tyler Clemente. He's a Rucker student. And this is one of the reasons why I am here today. He's the one that put cyberbullying on the map. Tyler was videotaped without permission and without his knowledge. He had no idea. So he's sitting there, just going about his day, getting videotaped and unaware. That video was then shared throughout the, the Rutgers campus, and then it was shared basically throughout the nation. Right? That's how fast it moved. Within 48 hours, Tyler Clemente committed suicide. The individual that filmed him never thought in a million years that his funny joke would end up in a suicide. And he certainly didn't think he'd ever be tried for murder. And that's where he's at. He's tried for murder. In no way, shape, or form did that 18-year-old college you know, student and freshman ever think that that's what was going to happen. Moreover, he's gone. He's never coming back. We're never going to get that individual back. And let me tell you, he's got a mother, he's got a father, he's got friends, he's got sisters. It affected so many people. It shook the nation. And finally made us realize that cyberbullying, which I'm no longer calling cyberbullying, I'm going to call it cyber harassment and cyber humiliation because that's exactly what it is. It ended his life. That's the lasting effects. It can go just to the principal. It can go to the police. It could get into your families. It could ruin your life. And not a single one of the origins of these stories did any of these people think, I'm going to get this guy to kill himself. I'm going to get this girl to have her parents get divorced. I'm going to make sure that this girl can't go to college because of me. No one ever thinks that. You think it's harmless. You're really not doing it. You're just trying to do it to entertain yourselves. So we're going to call it cyber harassment, cyber humiliation. What can we do about it? we got to put something in action. I'm not one of those guys who's going to sit up here and say this is all these negative things that happened. Because it's happening in this school right now and I know it. So what are you going to do about it? What are we going to do? You're the 8th grade class. You're the top. Everything that you do, the grades below you are going to do. They idolize you. So how do you stop this? How do we turn this around? How do we make this school better? You don't like negative posts. Don't like it. Don't throw up an emoji. Don't do it, right? But then in the same process, don't just stand by and do nothing. Because that's almost as bad as liking it. When you sit there, oh, I saw that post. But, uh, again, just like the 22 million and the 6%. You're just, you're just allowing the virus to keep spreading. You're allowing it to continue. We're just letting this infect all of us. And you never know who the next person's going to be. Post positive messages. In the video, it shows Jane Doe getting called ugly. Nobody wants to see her. And somebody finally posts and says, Jane's my friend. I think she's a great person. I really enjoy Jane. And it made a very big difference. She's out of her locker crying. Next thing you know, people show up and say, we're here for you. We're here for you. We're going to back up. This is who I'm speaking to. I'm not really necessarily speaking to the bully. I'm speaking to all you that just stand by and don't do anything because it's not you. Right? You can do something. Alert parents and teachers if you see something. Stop it early. Stop the virus early because it's not a virus. It's a bacteria infection. We can stop it. You are the medicine. You can stop this. It does not need to be out of control. You fully have the opportunity to stop it. But it's very difficult to stand up and do that. And I'm not saying that's an easy test, but you as the 8th grade class got to be the ones to stand up and say something. you got to be the ones that step up. All right? So I want to show you another video here, okay, about being that change. Being it. Because we got to do this now, guys. You only got another, what, two months to make an impact at this school. This is your time. Be that change, guys.
Now, some of the things that's going to happen when you look out and see what can I contribute to, what can I give, I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have a voice that's saying, it's just no use. It's, it's, it's out of control now. There will be a voice telling you that you'll be wasting your time and wasting your energy and wasting your effort. I say, don't listen to it. Listen to that still, small voice that says, I can do something and I ought to do it. We ought to do it. The Israelis said this, nothing can resist the will of a people that will stake even their existence on the extent of their purpose for good. I strongly believe that, that all of us have some work to do, that each one of us showed up to do something, that each one of us showed up to contribute something to life, and that if we don't do it, it will not be done. Be it that you want to help and contribute to you or do something for the homeless, whatever you want to do, if you get up in the morning out of a sense of office and decide that I am an opening for the universe, that life can work through and use me as a channel and as an instrument for change. How will you serve the world? What do they need that your talent can provide? That's all you have to figure out. I can tell you from experience, the effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. You are ready and able to do beautiful things in this world. And after you walk through those doors today, you will only ever have two choices, love or fear. Choose love and don't ever let fear turn you against your playful heart. Begin to see yourself as an opening for the universe to move through, to work through to make a difference in life. See yourself being used by life to improve the quality of life, to expand and to grow. What's your legacy going to be here, guys? You're the eighth grade class. You're moving on. You have one more opportunity in two months to make a difference in this school. I just got done with the seventh and sixth grade classes. And just so you know, in each one of them, I had students come up to me and say that they're having a tough time. They're having a really tough time here. They're really hurting. They feel alone. This is your opportunity as the top guys here to find that individual and help them. And the way we're going to do that is to wear red on Friday, right? You wear red because it symbolizes importance. It symbolizes that the cyber humiliation, the cyber harassment, it stops with you. You don't have to wear it because you are being bullied. I don't even care if you are. It doesn't matter. You're just saying it's going to stop right with you. You will be the one that that sixth grade little girl or little boy can come up and say, thank you for wearing red today. Thanks for helping me out because these kids need you. They need you. You guys need each other. You're all you got. I'm only here today. Your teachers are only here when you're in school. You guys have each other. Somebody in this room, and I already know that they're definitely in this school, needed this presentation today. They needed this. And they're going to come in on Friday, and they're going to look around. And they're going to look for help. And they're going to wonder who's wearing the red and who's not. And I already had one sixth grade boy. I'm not wearing the red. That's all right. I want two more eighth graders to wear red so we can drown out that one sixth grade scenario. 
Because I'm not talking to the bully of the school here. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about the rest of you, the majority. The other 94% that just allowed this to go day by day. Right? We've all had it. We've all been there. So make sure you get up and you wear your red. You do what you have to do so that other people can see that you're all right, that we, we can stop with you. I want to leave you guys with some quotes, and these are going to be up in your room. I want you guys to think about this from day to day, because eventually this presentation will fade from your mind, right? And social media will ultimately have a much more powerful effect than I could ever do here. We already know that, right? So, if you are not making somebody else's life better, then you are wasting your time. Dig deep down, deep, deep down, and ask yourselves, who do you want to be? When I ask myself, I want to be the man that she sees in her dreams. Right? That's my girlfriend. I want to be everything I can for her. That's my purpose in life. Right? I want to be the man in her dreams. But you've got to look at yourself and say, who do you want to be? Because our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. It is terrifying to stand up and put a stop to this. It's our light that scares us the most, right? Or not the darkness. Keep that in mind. Make a choice. Just decide who you're going to be, what you're going to do, and how you're going to do it. Just decide. Don't be afraid of making decisions. Every day is a new day. Every moment's a new moment. Now, you have to go out and show them that you're a new creature right now. Right, eighth grade? You only got two months. This is the time, right now. And the last one that I leave you guys with that I really want you guys to think about, as a group, as a collective, however you want to take this last quote here, but you, the people, have the power to create happiness. Not one person or a group of people, but all people. You have the power to make this life beautiful. Keep in mind, it all starts with you guys. You're the top of the school. You can go ahead and make this change and make your legacy beautiful for the next couple grades after you. Who do you want to be? So these will be up in your classes for you to think about every day. Take a different quote each week, however you want to do it. But I'm, I'm still working my way through these quotes. So far, I've only answered one. All right. Do you guys have any questions for me before I conclude? Wonderful, okay. But so you want to know how to put a stop to it. Yeah, she looked like a boy, mm -hmm. and I used to call her fat. All right. That is one of the most remarkable things. I had somebody just stand up and say, I did something. Hold on one second. One, that's phenomenal that you were able to stand up and say something like that. That's unbelievable. And we as a group have to support her. And that's all you can do, guys, is just support and make sure that we can stop this before it happens. And we'll talk more after this because I know you guys got to get out but that was phenomenal I thank you so much for, for doing that and I thank you guys for being a great audience I appreciate it <laughs>